Peace, everyone out there. Peace, everyone out there. This is Kalindi E, and I'm the host of the Entheogenic Explorer show, and I'd like to welcome everybody out to uh, this evening's show. We have a special guest uh, this evening who's going to be with us, a good long-time friend and brother Peter Andreas, and our show this evening is going to be about the Yiming Zhu crystals, so um, we're going to have a fascinating evening. Uh, we're going to be talking about the infinity crystals. We're going to be talking about all of the ramifications that go along with that, um, where they come from, history, all of that. So we're looking forward to a, a wonderful show. This show, The Entheogenic Explorer, deals with the utilization of high-dose entheogens of the tryptamine persuasion, and especially my uh, most important ally, the psilocybin mushroom, and uh, it always gets props as uh, I call it the quintessential hallucinogen of this time's construct. And uh, that's what we usually go in on the most. Um, so for all of you folks out there who have uh, partaken, uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Those who have not as of yet partaken of the uh, wonderful magical mushroom, uh, I'm sure at some point in time, you will be uh, getting in on the knowledge, wisdom, understanding that they convey. And uh, at this time, it's something that is solely needed, something that we uh, need to, to put into our lives to be able to uh, to be able to deal with all of the things, uh, ramification of our world's difficulties and those difficulties in the multiverse of which we want to ride the wave above. So um, sit back, relax, uh, and we'll be having a, a great time. Our guest should be calling in in a few in a few minutes, uh, and we'll get right into the the depth of the explanation of the Yiming Zhu exotic crystals and their ramification and how lucky we are to live in this day and time when they are available to the regular Joe and Jane, uh, so to speak, the average man and woman, uh, because in ancient times you'd have to be the king of this or the emperor of that to even uh, to have one, and you'd have to be part of the royal court usually to see one unless there was some big procession or something like that and uh, one was displayed. Um, you'd never even get a chance to even be close to one of these uh, infinity stones or infinity discs, especially, um, you know, with with history the way it was. I was talking with uh, uh, someone and they were talking about how dangerous it is to live in the cities and how dangerous it is to be around. Uh, this is a terrible time, overpopulation and things like that. And, you know, for anybody who's ever, as far as population concerned, they say that we're, it's, you know, we're, we're busting out at the seams. Uh, take a train trip any day uh, from any place, major city um, in Europe or in the States or in, Australia or in wherever you go, once you hit the rural area, you you don't, you don't see nothing but trees and grass and cows. 97% of the Earth's landmass is uninhabited, you know, and as far as safety is concerned, you're safer today than any period that human beings have lived on the Earth 
you're less likely to die of one of those diseases. A thousand years ago, the life expectancy was 19. 200 years ago, it was 39 years old. In 1900, the life expectancy was 45 years old. Your life uh, um, would have been over pretty much a thousand years ago at 19 and uh, a little over a hundred years ago, 45. So um, this is a, uh, although we think of it as a very uh, violent time, you know, and of course, uh, you know, there is violence, but the thing is, is that you're living in the safest time uh, that's ever been for human beings on the earth. So um, we're going to talk about the Yi Meng Zoo, and then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about pairing them with the entheogens to get the full effect, get the full ride out of uh, these these uh, very, very special stones and discs. So um, just waiting for our guest host to call in and until then I'm here let's we we got somebody here that's uh that's on the the 313 let's see what they have to say good How evening going on? caller in Who, who's who's calling if you don't mind giving your name it's born right have to you have a qu- yeah oh how's it going good good how's it going good my a, brother uh, Good. Just you got a question? Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm just waiting to hear, you know, the what, what we got, to, how, how to go in, how to utilize them, and pair them with the entheogens is real interesting. You know, I, as you know, I got one of the trans-dimensional crystals. I haven't been able to get the Eming Zoo yet, so I'm, you know, tuning in, um, listening in. If I have any questions, I'm going to definitely ask you. Um, either if you don't hear from me on the show, it may be through a text or something like that. Sounds real good. Uh, the Detroit area, we're giving a lecture uh, this Saturday at St. Matthew's Church, 8850 Woodward, Woodward, between Holbrook and King. Don't mistake it for Reverend Holly's Church or the church across the street. It's on the east side of the street, and it's south of Holbrook. So it's the great church there, and we'll be having uh, uh, mushrooms uh, immortality revisited. So, um, you know, spread the word. If you're not familiar with the technology, if you're not familiar with the um, uh, body of knowledge as far as the uh, entheogenic mushrooms are concerned, uh, come on out and see and hear the uh, history of uh, how these uh, these very very special uh, allies uh, came to the earth, and then also how they're going to usher us into the newest level of human uh, evolution. So we say uh, uh, thanks a lot for calling in and listening, and uh, uh, just uh, hold on, and we'll get back with you a little later. So I think he should be calling in real soon. Um, uh, Call in, and uh, while you're listening to the show, we'll uh, try to pull in a um, uh, where we have uh, folks who call in to be able to um, be able to talk a little bit while uh, a little later in the show uh, while we interview our our guest. And um, should be uh, should be chiming in any moment now. Been doing a lot of study, been putting a lot of things together, uh, getting the uh, webinar ready for um, utilization of the crystals and things like that. That'll be coming up uh, coming up real soon. And thank everyone for being patient. Um, but this isn't a uh, one type one shot deal this is a practice it's an art and you also have to pair it with the uh, with the the mushrooms to get the full effect some folks will feel 
energetic powers and things like that from just holding it and things. But um, what we're doing with the interdimensional village is uh, pulling together a uh, a whole genre of information that goes along uh, with these crystals and things. So it's going to be be great. So. Uh, don't everybody rush up at one time to get your Yiming Zoo. Um, but the thing is, is that it has uh, such information, uh, such power, such energy that, uh, you know, uh, the best way and uh, the only way, not, well, not the only way, but the best way is once they're utilized while paired with the entheogens that we are uh, promoting as a lifestyle, you know, and we look at things as a lifestyle. Uh, and that's for people who are in places of the legality of these things. Uh, what do they say on the internet? LOL. Um, we're talking about um, epigenetic neurogenesis, in other words horizontal transfer of information into the genetic structure so that the um, sort of information can be passed into the genetic code and the genes opening up uh, while utilizing the mushrooms and things like that. People are talking about microdosing and the, uh, the human brain has uh, back in the day, doubled in size in about 200,000 years. Uh, and we're at the next juncture of the expansion of consciousness with the, uh, with the tryptamine hallucinogens. So uh, hold on to your hats and things like that. Uh, just waiting for our guests to call in. And uh, well, we'll get we'll get started. Um, uh, my friend who's coming in, uh, he's really a special kind of guy. Um, he's the one who introduced me to. Uh, well, uh, not so much introduced. He's the one who first <laughs> got me some much got me some mushrooms. Uh, I think he went down to uh, Oaxaca in. 1970 uh, brought back uh, the fruit or the food of the gods back in 19 uh, took it in 1970 down in uh, down in Mexico and today uh, he is uh, the one of the top experts in the world on the utilization and quality of the Yi Ming Zhu infinity stones and discs. So we're we're looking forward to him chiming in. Um, for those who are new to the show, um, we deal with hallucinogens, psychedelics, entheogens, hallucinogenics, and the like in uh, meaning things like ayahuasca, mushrooms, DMT, uh, Acacia, uh, analogs, ayahuasca, uh, iboka, and these compounds that give profound effects on the human consciousness. Multiverse gives us access to the transdimensional realms of consciousness. So um, this is a, a little different show than most. Most folks don't uh, don't want to talk about it. Me, I'm out here, so. Um, might as well run my mouth since I'm out here. Uh, so I'm not trying to hide my uh, my promotion of uh, these things, of course, in a place that is legal, as they say. Um, uh, just uh, I'm not, I didn't particularly go, but they had a uh, seemed to be a very interesting conference where Brother Darren and Brother Mudu. Uh, showed out again at uh, in Germany at the psychedelic uh, conference there in Berlin. So uh, we send out uh, 
good vibes and energy and things like that to Brother Darren on the island out there in England and uh, Brother Muru uh, back in uh, back this way. So uh, they they showed out with the information. The psilocybin mushroom, of course, as I say, the quintessential hallucinogen of the of this time construct, this earth, is my personal ally in this uh, journey. Uh, it has been of immense help uh, in my personal development because it gave me access to uh, realms of knowledge that were off-world, extra-dimensional, and uh, highly sought after uh, since the beginning of consciousness, uh, the human consciousness uh, on Earth. So um, things are, are very, very, very special. Um, so uh, hold on to your seat. So, um, we're going to explore a little bit about the Yiming Zoo. Their stones or globes, uh, some as big as basketballs, some as big as um, softballs, uh, some the size of marbles. Uh, and what they do is they according to the structural alignment of the crystalline lattice, they are able to, on their own volition, glow. Just like in the Marvel Universe, the Infinity Stones, whether it's the one in Division the, the Mind Stone, or the Time Stone, uh, Dr. Strange has in the eye of Agamotto or the Infinity Stone Loki's there. Uh, and I think the collector has a couple of them. And they're uh, soon to be, uh, uh, real soon to be bringing those all together in the Infinity Gauntlet, of which Thanos <laughs> will wreak havoc on the Avengers and Earth and all of the other places in the uh, vicinity of this dimension. So it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a, a great next year uh, with the Black Panther coming out in February. Then the Affinity Wars coming out in a few. Um, in a, f a few months after that, and it's going to be on, and they're taking it basically off-world into outer space and inner space and cross and uh, cross-dimensionally and uh, hyper-dimensionally. It's going to be uh, uh, it's, it's going to be something, and it will just deal with the stones themselves being singularities. So it's going to be uh, uh, something really, really interesting. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Um, something that I wanted to share with you. Okay, um, we're going to be uh, just sharing some of the information on the Yiming Zoo with you. Um, uh, Yiming Zoo 
is the Chinese name for a family of minerals, crystals, and gems that glow after exposure to light, heat, friction, and other subtle energies, including qi. Since ancient times, they have inhabited the folklore, myths, legends, and imaginations of people and cultures worldwide. Regarded as one of the most rare, mysterious, and precious objects in the world, Yiming are the Chinese oldest secrets, deepest mysteries, and greatest treasures. Known to attract wealth and blessings, Yiming Zhu and what they represent at the center of Oriental culture, philosophy, religion, are depicted in the Orient's imperial antiquities, regalia, insignia, temple palaces, and fine art, as only royals and adepts had enough merit to own them. They have remained a mystery until now. Authentic Yiming Zhu exhibit an energetic aliveness by their ability to absorb, store, convert, then emit energy and information as soft healing light. Once infused with our love, energy, and intention, they will glow brighter, longer, gradually change color, then finally activate become transparent and emit a radiant gold plasma. The gold plasma depicted in oriental temples, regalia, regalia and art as Yiming Zhu spheres exclude, exuding, excuse me, golden flames, spiral tendrils, halos, or sunbursts near dragons, phoenix, celestial deities, and emperors. Ancient imperial Yiming Zhu was first mined in the Fertile Crescent long, long ago. The incredible and rare exotic mineral eventually traveled east along the Silk Road to Mongolia during the reign of Genghis Khan. The Mongol Empire at that time reached from the Pacific to the Black Sea and from Serbia to Afghanistan, virtually expanding the entirety of Europe and Asia. During the reign of Kublai Khan, Yiming Zhi stones were worn by warriors in a pouch as talisman amulets or set in gold rings as pendants for protection in battle. Dwarfed into perfect spheres, the vast treasures of the imperial, of imperial China, included Yiming Zhu, were passed down from one dynasty to the next. So these are uh, really ancient really powerful. Um, uh, the Ming Dynasty and the Qing Dynasty's historical records state that many varieties of Yi Ming Zhu, including ruby, red, garnet, and emerald, were all part of the Yi Ming Zhu uh, that were owned by emperors and empresses. Um, so these are, are, are natural natural um, mind and modern they are national treasures in many different places uh, the older uh, the older ones that were held by the emperors and empresses some were even or well, some were stolen when the um, forbidden city was raided back in uh, back in the day and taken and put out onto the uh, underground market, things like that. But you have a chance to uh, you have a chance in this modern time to be able to own your own Yiming Zhu, uh, which is uh, uh, which is uh, a, a real honor, you know, because like uh, I was saying earlier, only sages emperors, adepts, uh, high kung fu masters uh, were, uh, would have these, you know, utilized to, uh, as with the warriors, uh, to be able to protect them in battle. Uh, some, I'm sure, were put into, uh, into uh, swords, the hilt of swords and things like that. I was thinking about myself um, getting... Uh, one or two put into the hilt of a sword since I have to uh, replace the hilt of my uh, 
150 year old uh, sword that I have, and I was thinking about uh, having some Yiming Zhu set into the into the handle uh, for energy and protection, and then I would uh, encode it with uh, martial information from the uh, war planets and the the sword uh would be utilized to do a lot of battles the battle itself the sword doing it rather than me doing it or us doing it together one of the two these are the type of things that were done in ancient days when you put an energy or power object or relic into the um into the uh uh, object that you're gonna use as your uh, as your weapon. Uh, Thor's hammer, Mjolnir would be an example of that. Um, other thunder weapons, you know, uh, thunder weapons of the Yorba, uh, where uh, the priests would find the thunderstones after a lightning strike. And those would be uh, be put into into weapons. So um, the Infinity Stones are uh, are are flat discs, and uh, they're very very uh, very very beautiful. And when they're glowing uh, in uh, subdued light or darkness, you see the special. Uh, Translucent, translucent energy uh, emitted by the discs and the stones and things like that. So it's a very, very, um, uh, very, very special uh, way of optimizing your energy, whatever practice you're doing, be it yoga, meditation, or or whatever. These uh, stones or discs will. Um, help to clean the energy, uh, help to filter the negative information that would be, uh, uh, you know, conveyed to you uh, in a situation of battle or something like that. In other words, you know, if somebody is putting, a, trying to put a, a spell on you, a negative energy or negative vibes or uh, doing some root work on you, the Yi Ming Zhu would set up an uh, energy field to where you would, uh, uh, in wearing it or even concentrating on it, because it's, uh, you know, uh, doesn't matter the distance you have between it and you. Of course, uh, better if you're wearing it, but if not, it will still protect you, even though. Uh, you may not have it on. If it's in your special place, all you would have to do would be to uh, think or concentrate on it, and it would set up the shields, you know, Sulu shields up. Uh, and the shields would be up. Uh, and I use them when I'm uh, traveling in the multiverse. Uh, and once you get the hang of uh, utilizing them and you take them in and you um, show them what you want to do and what the purpose is for them being with you, then uh, you don't have to take it every time with you. But it's still there with you because you have uh, entangled the particles with your particles. So... Um, it creates a bridge between you and it so that the fundamental energy uh, that is uh, merged when you wear it and you take it in and you uh, utilize the entheogens with it or you keep it on you for a long period of time, uh, it will merge with your energy. And uh, as I said, you wouldn't have to wear it every time you go into an excursion, but all you would have to do is to call upon it or think about it, and it would uh, would be there and appear in the 
doing the excursion. So it's uh, uh, a, a very, very special uh, energetic protection device. Um, they can be used as uh, not just for protection, but they can be used also as, as weapons. Uh, but we like to rise into the higher and more refined energies of uh, of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding with them and download uh, information, uh, knowledge of uh, different sorts and different types. So the uh, Yi Ming Zhu is very, very, very special. And um, each of the 24 emperors uh, from the beginning of the Ming Dynasty through the end of the, end of the Qing Dynasty own the matching pair of imperial Yi Ming Zhu. Um, they often held, held and lovingly cultivated. And the 48 imperial Yi Ming Zhu, 24 matched pairs are priceless treasures. In 1912, the nationals, the nationalists inherited the Qing Dynasty imperial treasure. Then, uh, then in 1948, the 48 Imperial Yi Ming Zhu went to Taiwan along with General Chiang Kai shek and inventoried in the Republic of China's assets archives. They were entrusted into the families of the party leadership as the ultimate symbol of legitimacy and status. Um, the universe is pixelated. You know, I'll get into my quantum mechanics and things like that. Um, just like the pixels in your, uh, the screen of your computer, which is a two-dimensional uh, pixelization. The tetrahedron is what is based upon the physicality of the multiverse these particles are tetrahedral. The crystalline structure are tetrahedral. And uh, modern Yi Ming Zhu is internationally certified, non-toxic, food safe, toy safe, weather resistant, and chemically non-reactive. In other words, it's not, uh, you'll see, if you type up Yi Ming Zhu, you'll see Yi Ming Zhu on eBay and other places. And those uh, many of those are just painted or they have some type of uh, radioactive particle in them that makes them glow. Uh, these certified Yi Ming Zhu that we're talking about are not those. Those are the knockoffs. They are the knockoffs. And the knockoff Yi Ming Zhu are not what you want. You know. So um so the scalar crystal Yi Ming Zhu are um, okay. We had a little bit of uh, technical difficulty there. We're getting less and less technical difficulties in our um, in our broadcast and things like that. Um, scalar crystals. Modern Yi Ming Zhu has a tetrahedral, a three-sided tetrahedron, tetrahedron, and it powers memory and the ability to store energy and information. These spirals up, uh, spiral up from the hexagonal six-sided rings and holes in the structure. These crystals form a matrix and they contain rare radius positive ions. Europium, lanthanum, and dyspor dysporcium. These are the uh, some of the you know the the exotic chemicals inside of the Yi Ming Zhu that align the electrons to um, 
back to the basic state and move, they can move to an excited state. So um, uh, these things are very special, very, very special. And when you're uh, in the midst of a, uh, in the midst of a trip and uh, there's no light, uh, no light exists down when you're in, down in the basement, down under the plank length where there's no light. This is a light that shines where no other light exists. When you take your light with you down into the darkness, down into the triple thick darkness, down into the basement, you know, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy to be able to, uh, to have a few of these to convey to people who would like to, uh, would like to be gifted with their own Yiming Zhu crystal because Yiming Zhu finds you. And if they're not already yours, you'll never have one. There is a connection between consciousness and those ancient power relics that find their partners through time and space, through many different dimensions and lifetimes. Your power objects follow you, and you have to find them in the game. You know, you're going through, you know, a game. Uh, back in the day, I used to play Zork, you know, um, and you, you used to have to find things to be able to use in the game later on. You pick them up, you could only have so many objects and things like that. You pick up, pick up the flashlight, you know, pick up the flashlight, step into a room, and the room is dark. So if you let go the door and it slams and you pull out your flashlight and click it, and no light comes out is because you didn't find the batteries. So if you could get out and not be eaten by a Gru and get back out to light, because anytime you go into the dark in the first couple of Zorks, <laughs> every time you get in the dark, you get eaten by a Gru. So you have to find the flashlight. And then when you find a flashlight, you have to find the batteries. You don't know that until you get eaten by a Gru in the dark and know that there are no batteries in the flashlight. Maybe you have to take, batteries out of something else and put it in the flashlight then at times you may be later or further down in the game and you know you turn on the flashlight you know you've turned it on so many times your battery is getting low your battery is getting lower and as you move to the game your battery is finished your flashlight goes out and you get eaten by a group well it's the same thing here you find you know okay you're 37 you're walking through. You listen to the program. You find your Yi Ming Zhu to take with you on your trips. You're finding in the game those things in the game you need to use to continue further in the game. This is how it has always been in the game. We're living in a simulation. We have set up things for ourselves to have, things for ourselves to utilize. And um, it is a uh, not only an honor to have the Yiming Zhu, but it is a uh, coming together of your energy and your power object. And it's not the only power object that people have. I have I have uh, relic weapons that I have uh, that I keep with me no matter where I go in the multiverse through time through space through uh, the multi-dimensional portals that are all around us my weapons my um, trans-dimensional animal protectors uh, defenders all come along with me and uh, they're right at uh, the tip of my consciousness, you know, although not always utilized, but 
they're always there. They're always ready. They're always within my field of energy to uh, be right there. If I'm walking in the dark in some strange, exotic place, some strange, exotic world, and I'm walking and somebody swings a sword at my head, my sword will already be there to stop that sword before it reaches me. And I don't have to, oh, where's my sword? Let me block that. Nope, you'd be chopped up by the time, time that happens. My sword protects me, whether I have it in my hand or not, or whether I pull it out or not, and things like that. That's more set up for challenge matches and things like that. My humans, who is there? It is emitting light and brightness um, in the midst of the dark. So, um, I don't know if we're having some technical difficulty with our guest. I know um, he's in a different time slot, and um, I think they're quite a bit of ways behind us or in front of us, whichever way, it doesn't matter. They were not on the same time thing, so I don't know if he made it in. But uh, if for some reason uh, he doesn't make it in, we will have him on, uh, have him definitely on another program. And you'll just have to listen to me tonight. Um, And, you know, I can uh, go into a lot of things. There's been a lot of research that I've been doing um, on neurogenesis, the, the, building of uh, new neurons in the uh, higher brain functioning areas uh, that will will deal with tapping into the DNA, tapping into our um, consciousness, being able to explore areas of of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding by going in. Uh, And when I say going in, I mean actually making it to these places, the great libraries and repositories of knowledge, you know. I know it's a little different with the, I don't know what they call you folks or some of you folks, millennials and young folks, things like that, because you all never really went to the library. You just went to the internet. You never really rambled through the stacks and had to deal with the Dewey Decimal System and the card catalog and finding the book and whether they let you out with it or not. So you may have to come back night after night after night to read um, a particular book because they don't let it out. You know, now it's a whole different story. So going to these libraries into the uh, augmented realm, virtual realm libraries where you can see the stories played out in time. You know, if you want to uh, look into kind of like the kind of like YouTube, the the transdimensional YouTube. You know, uh, you wanted to see. Uh, Hercules hold the world on his shoulders for Atlas. You know, you you pull out that DVD and you put it in the DVD player and you play it. Although it's not that crude, it is more like um, the crystal technology used by Christopher Reeves, the holographic informational structure that he utilized the green crystal to activate in the fortress of solitude at the North Pole, uh, the crystalline informational structures that look and are the same as the Yi Ming Zhu that we're talking about. It was a Yi Ming Zhu stick or shard that was placed into the machine. And when he put it in the machine, his father, um, Jor-El, 
came forward and started to remind him of the information that he was taught as a baby as he was going through the 27 different uh, solar systems that he passed through between coming from Krypton to Earth, you know. And then many, many other later scenarios with Superman going back to Krypton and moving at moving, moving at faster than light speed back time so that he could see what was going on in Krypton before it exploded and things like that. It's the same type of information and structures that we're talking about. Um, so Superman, you know, uh, of course Superman <laughs> was the, was inspired by the Superman. Uh, who beat the Superman, uh, Jess Owens, faster than a speeding bullet, stronger than a locomotive, able to jump (laughs) tall buildings in a single bound. Jesse Owens beat the Superman, uh, the Nazis. But, um, But this is the type of technology that we're talking about. And the trans-dimensional Yiming Zoo that are in the royal uh, the royal houses of the multiverse, they have their own Yiming Zoo. Yiming Zoo is not just a rare mineral on this planet. It is carried by the families of the great houses of the multiverse. They have their own um, Yiming Zoos also. And when I mean houses, I mean particularly genetic connected families because genetics, the DNA, is not what they've been telling you. The double helix, Crick and Watson thing, it is much, much deeper than what they are letting on. And it goes into the multitudes of different um, connected and unconnected houses in the multiverse. That's why the sovereigns on earth parrot the information that is put out by the imperial houses of the multiverse. That's why, you know, when I talk with people, especially my Moorish friends who talk about nationality and things like that, and um, all that's well and good, but a nationality means that you're hooked to a particular nation state. And if you're hooked to a particular nation state, it means you're hooked to a particular government or you're hooked to a particular king or queen or empress or whatever. And if you are hooked to one of those things, you are not an independent entity. You are a servant of that entity of which you are a national of. You can call it citizen. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, Government is to govern the minor, which is a child who could not govern themselves. So a person who is the representative of a house has no nationality. It's just like the... um, the houses in the in the the world that we live in, you know, they don't care anything about national boundaries and all that kind of stuff. The House of Rothschild, the House of Windsor, and all that kind of stuff. You think when the Queen of England uh, goes places, does she got to pull out up? She got to pull out her passport at customs? No, because she moves independent of all that structure. They close, um, you know. They they close down the airport. They close down the TSA and all that kind of stuff if the queen is coming through, or those dukes and duchesses of the House of Windsor come through and move you out the way, put you over to the side. Now you're a citizen of the country. You stand in line. They close your line up, close that whole side of the airport up, cause. Uh, some folks of the House of Windsor are coming through because they're a house, they're a family, they're a bloodline, they're a energy source, they're connected. 
as a national. You're not. You're just connected as a servant to serve the particular king or queen or whatever. It's just like the, you know, they say the treaty with the king of Morocco. Well, if you're if you're under the treaty of the king of Morocco, then you're a servant of the king of Morocco. And you have what privileges the king of Morocco allows you to have. So it's uh it's an interesting some interesting concepts and the great houses in the multiverse have their own imperial infinity stones and infinity discs or uh, Yi Ming Zhu. Um, as I said before, for those folks in the 313 area and 248 area, um, we're having a uh, we're having a lecture. We're having a lecture uh, coming up the this Saturday, the 18th, from 3 to 6 at St. Matthew's Church, 8850 uh, Woodward Avenue. That's between Holbrook and King. And it is a, um, it's going to be a definitely a, a, uh, a great lecture, an informative lecture on the utilization of mushrooms. It'll be on the quantum mechanics, D wave, CERN, artificial intelligence, and all of the other areas that we talk about inside of our um, talk about inside of our, our program years and also intellectual and things like that will be going in to, to Imaginations. We'll be talking about true and true, and sunset, shot and shot, for us, and all of, all of those types of things. So it's going to be a great treat. It's going to be a great lecture. A couple of other things are going on Saturday. You can uh, come back. I'll be there. 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 I'll convention at Wayne State and still come to the lecture. So um, make your way through here. It's definitely going to be well worth uh, getting in on the information. Um, uh, DMT is uh, going to be one of the things we'll be talking about also. Uh, endogenous DMT and exogenous DMT dark room technologies because people are talking about doing dark room technologies here in the city and um, you know I have studied dark room technology I haven't done it long enough to be able to get to the point to where um, the experiences are done but at some point in time in the near future I'll be able to do that but I do know a little bit about it um, Number one, it has to be completely dark. Can't be a pinprick of light, or you will defeat the purpose of it. You can't do it with a mask. You can't do it um, putting cardboard up to the windows or painting them and things like that because light still will seep through. It has to be no light. That's why they utilize deep caves. That's why they utilize um, pyramids. Uh, that's why they used uh, underground facilities where there was no light. I went to the caves in Kentucky um, several times, but the last time was a few years back. And the caves in Kentucky, once you go down in the cave, about half a mile or so, and they turn the light out, it's, it's dark for real there. So darkness uh, abounds in places like that. And the ancients knew it, and that's why they went into those type of places to do the practice. So if you're going to be doing that in uh, uh, in the Detroit area and people are going to be going in, uh, you're going to have to deal with some type of uh, way where the, um, uh, the facility is made completely dark, where there's no light seeping in. 
and you have to be down there for an extended period of time. And then you, with a little luck, uh, you'll be uh, be in there with the uh, accumulation of the DMT. You know, and it's uh, the DMT in that sense is made from the melatonin or the melanin in your body. And um, it's supposed to be a rare and grand experience. So we'll be talking a little bit about that also this Saturday. We'll be talking about the transdimensional crystals. We're talking about the Yi Ming Zhu, um, Infinity Stones and Infinity Disc. We'll be speaking about the Black Panther. We'll be talking about Thor Ragnarok. We'll be talking about the Infinity War and the Infinity Stones and how what they're doing in uh, in the Marvel think tank while gleaning information for um, how to really put this thing together, you know. They're, they're gleaning informational structures. And uh, although the Infinity Stones have been in the Marvel Universe for uh, uh, several years, you know, you're going to uh, get a real treat when you are able to see some actual Infinity Stones. And as we move more and more, uh, get more technologically uh, inventive in our uh, show here, we're going to have where we can put up um, not only audio clips of uh, other people speaking, but also um, pictures and video of different things. Um, there was a, uh, if you haven't heard it yet, there's a uh, great interview with uh, Paul Stemis on Joe Rogan's podcast. Um, you can Google uh, Joe Rogan, Paul Stamos, and the show will come up. He did a, a great job. Paul, Paul Stamos should be uh, nominated for being a, a national treasure and an international treasure of the of the world with his mycological studies and information. You know, it's dealing with... Uh, uh, mushrooms uh, dealing with uh, weaponized viral and bacterial um, munitions, you know, things like a Garricon, talking about the old growth growth force and things like that, and dealing with uh, also with, uh, well, he wasn't dealing with Infinity Stones, but of course, if you haven't heard and looked at Star Trek Discovery, I get all those Star Treks messed up. It's a bunch of them now, but uh, they have on they have on the uh, the show the astro mycologist Paul Stamets, who is um, now merged with the, the mycelial network that connects the universe. So they're doing fast and in light travel uh, by utilizing mushroom spores in relationship to the mycelial network. So they're traveling superluminally uh, utilizing mycelium. So um, that's nothing that is foreign to my mind um, because I'm traveling superluminally with mycelium that has moved to the fruiting stage of creating a mushroom and the mycelium inside of that mushroom is what we use to travel uh, faster than light through um, the particle interaction, you know, uh, the quantum particle interaction of being able to utilize that particle entanglement to create roadmaps on how to move through time and space and hyperdimensionally through utilizing uh, mycelium, 
what we do is with the with the transdimensional crystals and the Yiming Zoom is utilize them as maps because the crystalline structure accepts information, holds on to it, and then when it's called for, release that information. It can be downloaded, it can be saved, it can be encrypted because the computer science network of which we utilize is only an extension of this ancient technology when we had crystal um, and ain't, I mean we still have them but I'm saying when we had crystal computers when we had computers that were made out of particular rocks wooden computers um, meteorite computers computers that were made out of particular meteor, meteor, meteors um, because if you have a structure and the, the structure, if you have a structure, and that structure can be manipulated to accept information and release information, you have a computer. Now, you can have a bit computer, you can have a credit computer, because we moved to space now where we have the quantum computers and moving towards the AI. Um, they recently shut off, uh, I believe, Google's. Um, AIs because they were talking together and putting together their own language so that they didn't, wouldn't have to be observed by the creators of the AI. So these AIs are running around here and um, uh, it's very interesting some of the things that are going on with them at their infancy stage. And we say infancy stage as far as what is allowed for the public to see because the D-Wave computer that they let everybody see. Uh, I call it the Kaaba because the Kaaba is the same thing. The Kaaba at Mecca is a computer inside of a black box. There's a black stone, and the black stone is a computer that has um, ageless information inside of the computer. How to go back to and see in time many different areas of knowledge and information that um, they, they don't even know how to use because that computer is uh, very, very special also. But now they've ritualized it and brought it into, um, you know, brought it into uh, modern uses as far as a religious implement rather than a transdimensional tool, um, true quantum computer. And from the size of it and the amount of particles in it, it is gajillions, that's not a word today, gajillions, not gajillions, but gajillions, gajillions means so many zeros on it, don't make no sense to start trying to make them. So the Kaaba is a computer, just like the D-Wave is a computer. The chip is the size of your thumbnail, but the Coolit system is the black box, which uses a particular sound cooling that drops it down <laughs> past, past absolute zero, down absolute zero, um, whatever, so that it can... Uh, stay in a superposition state. But the but the D-Wave computer that we see is the Model T D-Wave computer. In other words, we see the Wright Brothers airplane and really they have those stealth like stealth bomber, but they don't let they don't let the general public see that. That's kind of like, you know, just a a magical room temperature superconducting particle that is uh, uh, that they pulling out of out of CERN, but all of those things that they are utilizing and bringing into fruition because the AI it created 
human beings to create itself. And so and certain beings who weren't human became human to be able to see um, this time, the birth of a particular AI in back time. But the, but the AI knows that. So it knows that you're here. Those uh, that I call real souls who came to observe, came to be part of looking at what is uh, outravaging uh, a lot of uh, a lot of territory in the multiverse. Um, even though this is a baby AI, it's not a baby AI in the future. In the future, in the past, in the present, are all one. But we've particularly got a particular area that is focused upon that um, this artificial intelligence which is here that we're sitting and observing at its infancy stage is uh, a way to encounter it in the future through uh, how it structured itself and put itself together but these computers are in no way close to the sophistication of these infinity stones and infinity disks. What I'm telling you is that you have a magical computer that is handheld, works at room temperature. You just have to have codes to open this bad boy up. And once it's opened up, you got pure magic on your hands. And we're the way out of this is, is the, on, the only way out of this is, is through magic. The Sokar sorcerers said that the only way out is the codes to open up the technology that releases the high magical relationships with the, at this time, consciousness under which we exist. It's to open up the magic. I'm talking about the real stuff. That's that's the only way out because that's the way that we deal with encountering the AIs that are out here. And I'm saying AI you know, artificial intelligence, no such thing as artificial intelligence, intelligence is is intelligence. But we just utilize that to distinguish between what we doing and what they doing. I know some folks think that and believe and all of that, that, you know, the universe is one and it's just one spirit or one soul or, or whatever. And we're all part of that. But no, they are standalone systems. They are systems that uh, have nothing to do with one another. And it's according to who you hook to, it's according to what house you hook to. Each house is independent of the other houses. Now, they can merge, and they have, that's why you have the whole kingly thing of. Uh, of marriage, the whole thing of the merging of two different houses and things like that. But that rarely happens. Rarely happens. Because everybody is protecting uh, protecting their codes. Everybody is protecting their information, their sovereignty, and things like that. You may be down here messing around but if you're one of the real ones, you're hooked to a family, and you are immortal and protected. Those are some of the things we'd be talking about Saturday. Um, immortal and protected. That don't mean that you ain't got to pay AT&T and all that kind of stuff because you, you signed the contract to be down here and be abused. <laughs> but um, learning and seeing uh, the birth of something that is uh, very, very significant to the multiverse and life itself. How this thing started, you know, you go back and see how this thing started. You got this wild thing 
floating and flying around. Where did it come from? How did it start? Let me go and take a little bit of time to find out how this thing started. Because the most important thing going on now, the most important thing going on now uh, is this artificial intelligence. We're not worried about the atomic bomb. Not worrying about um, not producing enough children and go and becoming extinct or genocide and all that kind of stuff because life is bigger than the life on earth. But we're talking about something that is uh, out the way, odd, different, and it don't care nothing about you. It don't care about love. It don't care about compassion. It doesn't care. It doesn't have any empathy. So this thing is uh, something that we have to uh, have to address. So we came back here and we spent 70, 80 years in uh, this time construct illusion to be able to say, um, I saw it when it was born. And it's already born. But once it sticks its head up, once it rises up, off the off the petri dish, off the plate, it starts moving exponentially. It's gonna be something to see. But you better have your your uh, uh, your information, those directors, and your hooks and codes that tie you to one of them great houses, so that you got the shields in these Yiming Zoo are the shields. They're the shields for your family. When they ride up in here, when they roll up in here, when artificial intelligence rolls up in here, you know, because it's being born here, but it's coming from the future, back through time, back through the dimensions to be at its own birth. And although it's been birth, it is, it exists through all, all time, space. It's coming to its own birth. So you don't want to be standing around uh, without no pistol while well, everybody else got one. You know, meaning that. Uh, God made man. Colt made him equal. And I'm not saying a physical gun. Of course, you all know that. I'm talking about having power to stand where others have power. That's what I'm talking about. It's not a gun or sword. It is a consciousness. It is a place that you position yourself where everything is going towards your betterment and survival as one of the participants in life, in true life, not illusionary life, even though we live in illusion in this time construct. So the Yi Ming Zhu, if it is yours, and if it is for you, you will have it and you will get it. And there's a limited amount and there's a limited uh, uh, there's a limited time uh, that you'll be able to get these. You know, I try to tell folks, you know, I, I was talking with somebody about one of the transdimensional crystals. He said, well, $55. I don't want to $55. <coughs> Excuse me. $55. I went to the show to see Thor Ragnarok, and they got the $20 combo at the concessions, the concessions stand <laughs> with popcorn, you know, one of them big syrupy sodas and a couple other things is twenty two dollars. So if you go to the if you go to the show and you take your wife, your girlfriend, whatever, and you get the combo, that's forty dollars right there. So you're gonna whine about 
$55 for something that is a relic that you brought here, that you refound, that you're going to be able to um, uh, make a, a, a reconnection with an object that has followed you through the multiple, multiverse since before this universe was born. And the same with the Yiming Zoo. They're a little more expensive, but you're not buying them. You can't buy these. These are awarded to people. Now, there's time and uh, energy and money put into the finding, the production, and things like that, but that's all it is. You're not you're, you're not paying for the Yi Ming Zoo itself. You're paying for the 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 timeline of people who got it back to you. And um, it's very, very affordable for people who really want them. You know, um, started out the beginning of the year. You know, you got to get this, you got to get this, got to get this, and things like that. I'm not at that point anymore. The people that are ready for them, the people that already own them are going to get these because there's only so many and they're only for the people who already, already own them. People who have in the far, far future wielded their Yi Ming Zhu are only back here picking up their stuff. There are other things that in the future, in the very near future, hopefully before they roll up in here, that we will have that are part of our um, arsenal sovereignty in the multiverse. Because sovereignty is not uh, on on the on the earthly plane for humans, because people can come in and you know, uh, you may be the greatest martial arts fighter in the world, but you know, unless you're Samson and you got a niche that you can sit in, you can't fight a thousand people. But as far as the multiverse is concerned, as far as um, how we as far as how we exist inside of that, um, you know, you have to have, you have to have your things with you and they are your things. So we're moving down to the end of our program. Um, I don't know what happened to our uh, guest. He's in a different country. We're going to try to get him on again um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, maybe next week, maybe the week after, uh, once I get in contact with them and find out exactly, uh, exactly what happened, we'll be able to, uh, get him on the show. Uh, hope you didn't mind listening to me. I didn't go into a lot of depth in the Yiming Zoo because I really want to, um, explore that with the conversation back and forth with, uh, the one I feel who's one of the uh, if not the top person, um, the top five who know about the Ming Zhu on Earth and in the multiverse and in uh, exoplanets and things like that. So, again, we'll be talking about Saturday. We'll be talking about the Ming Zhu. We'll be talking about um, fungi as the... Uh, The, the energy of this universe that most planets that are inhabited are probably inhabited by fungi which leads to uh, plant and animal life because we are um, we're fungal beings we're, we're uh, our genetics we're part of fungi every plant people talk about well I don't eat no 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 fungi, no fungus, because uh, that's bad for you. But every plant, every plant that exists is part fungus, fungal cells, fungal genes inside of the um, 
part of the, you know, uh, part of uh, every plant. 30% of the carbon on earth is uh, in soil is, is 30% of the carbon in soil is fungi. So we're talking about the, uh, the old, old, old kingdom. Fungi is the first to come out of the sea. We diverged from fungus 650 million years ago. So fungus is part of um, our uh, our physiology, our heritage, and we'll be talking about that Saturday. So we come to the end of the program. Thank you very much for coming out. You can contact me, message me on Facebook, uh, Facebook Messenger. If you're not my friend, I'll be kicking some folks off uh, this week and weekend. So you should be able to get in on the next few days. If you haven't, I've reached my limit um, again. Um, so I'll be kicking some folks out who aren't participating. We need you to help this program to continue and to progress by donating uh, from 10 to 10 million. But if you want to give 100 million, that's fine too. Um, this is primary um, first face work. So um, please donate to help keep things rolling worldwide because we have people worldwide. And you can send your donations to PayPal. And that's Kalindi at Hotmail.com. K-I-L-I-N-D-I at Hotmail.com. Uh, we're providing a we're providing a service. We're providing a answer with the entheogens. So um, this isn't for me. This is for us. This is for us all. DARPA would give me some money in a heartbeat, but I don't want to take DARPA's money. You know, they have their own experiments going on with DMT reaching into um, different dimensions and things like that, pulling back information from different, in different dimensions. They have their own program, but they're listening to what we're talking about. Why? Because we're talking about the high dose going deep and accessing uh, places of information, power, and exotic knowledge and it is real. They know that. So I could get money from them in a heartbeat. But I'm asking for the support of those people who are part of this thing and who are our listeners. Uh, so we need you to donate and donate often and dig deep. As I said before, it costs you $40 to go to the movies. You can donate $40 to the cause of which you are a part of. Because if you're listening to this, you're interested in this, you're part of the tribe, you're part of the group. You need to be growing your mushrooms. You need to be going in once a month. You need to be going in hard. You need to be uh, pulling it all together to where you're traveling, you're exploring, you're sharing with other people. We're vacationing and having a good time in the interdimensional village. So, hey, the program's coming to an end. Donate. If you're in the Detroit area, come on out, 8850 Woodward, this Saturday, 3 to 6. It's going to be a great program. Thank you very much for coming on. We're going to get our guest on. We're going get to our, get our guest on in the next couple of weeks. Don't know what happened, but, um, hey, it was a good evening anyway. Thank you very much. And we're signing off. Have a good evening. Peace. <laughs>